woman cooks some kind of stew for you, which is better than mama put, you will know that marriage is a very, very legal institution that God created for the satisfaction of man and woman. And that's why I would like to pray this morning for every marriage under any form of tension. I declare peace is coming on that marriage right now. Can I hear loud and say amen? Should I also tell you, marriage has challenges. I want to remember children the way she behaved to my wife. My wife went into the office then. I was there ministering. Power was flowing. People were manifesting testimony. No, you people should share testimony during service. And when I, after the service, I saw my wife sitting there crying. What happened? He said she played with somebody, child in the church, and the woman looked at her one way and took her child away. I said, that's why you are crying. The first thing she turned, she said, Lord, when will you give me my own babies? You know me, men who are spiritual, we see those things as nothing. I have to sit down and say, baby, you see children you are thinking? I say, yes. So I know you may not think about it because you are dead for God, but me, I need children. Tell your God to give me children. And I looked at her. I took her, we entered the car, took her to somewhere to take snacks. She refused. I said, okay, where do we go? I know that time if I pray, she will not pray. Because that time she's not happy. I told her, don't worry. When we go for evangelism on Friday, God will speak. And we'll flee from, I'm telling you the challenges in marriage. Because we don't know how to manage it. It's another man, you come inside, you came inside the office, you saw your wife, angry, crying. You say, ah, this woman not starting again because of no baby. Am I the one that says she's not giving me baby? Oh. I told her to relax. In the place of turning back, as I turned from her, God spoke to me and said, I'll give you two females. And I told my wife and said, God said, you are going to get pregnant anyway from now. And you have to He said, my husband, no, 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 no. I know God speaks to you, but this one, I need God to do it now. This is three months now. And, and before you know, she took it. And before the bishop, I call one day, in the middle of the night, one year, where's your wife? I said, she said, give her the phone. I said, why are you crying that you don't have a baby? I was saying, do you tell that? I said, don't tell him, talk to him. And I said, okay. Your husband told you, you have twins and you are laughing. You have twins in nine months' time. Go and get ready. And my wife started laughing. I said, have you seen now? And I showed her my phone. She saw that I did not call because my wife knows that I don't lie. She saw my phone. I did not call anybody. But see, today, we have two lively twins. So marriage has challenges. But the only way you can overcome the challenges is to live a spiritual life. Number two, to understand marriage is a platform for master prayers. Anytime I notice that me and my wife hold our hands together to pray and we come to church, God used to move very powerfully. Marriage is a platform for answer prayers. That's why I wonder when husband and wife they are quarreling from the house to church. What are you coming to do in church? You are doing nothing. Please, couple, listen to me. You're the one they made for you. It's you that you need this message is made for. Some women even quarrel with your husband that you don't have car, you don't have house. You know what your mates are doing. By the time you push the man to evil, how will you be able to rescue the man back? He said, we're certainly an issue. Somebody uh, is not a member here, is a church. They came here for cancer and our advice. The man went and took loan. Is it four million or five million? Okay, four million for marriage from Lapo. Now he can't pay. Five million, right? Yeah, he can't pay. Now they are they are threatening him to arrest the man and prosecute the man, jail, jail him. Is it not for the wife to be praying? The wife was even laughing him. Now the wife have divorced the marriage. The wife won't leave the house. There's no more marriage again. So when it comes to be subject to marriage, we need a lot of spirituality. And we need a lot of common sense not to copy anybody. So marriage is a platform for man's prayer. That's why First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. He said, woman, he said, husband, deal with your wife with understanding that your prayer may not be, that your prayer may not be hindered. If you don't want your prayers to be hindered, then Treat your wife and treat your husband with good understanding. I prophesy every marriage under crisis. I see peace being released on that marriage right now. Can I hear loud and say, man? So marriage is also number. One, also the, the the next point. Marriage should be understood that a man is the prophet of the house. 
your wife does not have any right to go and be seeing another prophet apart from you until you say okay go and see my pastors we had an issue that we are trying to solve now they just got married the marriage is three years he said the prophet told him the prophet went to die that is not his husband that's why they are suffering another prophet told him i said but did they carry your leg to enter the marriage man he said no and they told him it's not his husband. So all the things that the man has spent, the, 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 the kind of pain the man have took that he went to your village, you don't even remember. He said they are no more married again. And today the marriage has disappeared. Why? The man was not ready to govern the house. He's just black, just lazy and all that. Thing. And the man started moving from one prophet to You know, this place we have so much of prophet. From prophet to prophet to prophet to prophet to prophet. Prophet, 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 prophet. Before you know they are prophet like you. And you have missed the glory of destiny for your life. Please, marriage is not about prophecy. Marriage is all about the word of God. Finally, to see what are the benefits of marriage. And I see marriage was instituted by God, instituted by God, not by man. It is not a man, man made something. Marriage is instituted by God. God created the marriage so all of us can live peacefully. However, what are the benefits of marriage? How do I know that God, God instituted marriage? John chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Jesus was in Canaan in Galilee. To tell you that God was the origin, originator of marriage. What is the benefit of marriage? Marriage provides us divine presence of God. He was here in Canaan in Galilee to show his presence to them. Marriage provides divine presence to our own. Psalm 16 verse 7 we say, Thou will show me the path of life and the plan that is finished you and the right hand that are pleasure for them. It provides the presence of God. And without the presence of God in your marriage, your marriage will be open to satanic, so satanic attacks. To satanic attacks. Number two, marriage provides available, available peace. And this is, it can be workable between two of you. Before I got married, I read 42 books. It's no mouse. My wife read about, I don't know how many books he read, but I bought books for her. Once I'm buying in land, I am buying in Abuja, I am buying for her. I'll tell her what I've been there. In the presence of you, you are doing marriage, you are just in church, you are still sleeping with yourself. We don't have, we have no time to sleep with ourselves. Whenever we want to meet, we meet in church. In Equa. You know, Equa, Equa is a very strict church. We meet in church, we pray together. And there's no time for me to even be playing with her. Once I'm finished talking, wow, 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 they've said the car. Security, wow, wow, I'm already blowing to Abuja. So I can meet up with my flight. So there was no room to say, you taste me, I taste you before marriage. We live a godly life. And that's why sometimes when Satan is trying to attack us, me and she will always stand in the night and say, Lord, remember we present our vow to you and we don't break the vow. Open this door. Marriage is for peace, not for trouble. There are some men, when they are coming, their wife is running. Tiger is coming. There are some women, that they are like Mike Tyson to their husband. They beat their husband every time. That is not the essence of marriage. There are things that make you not to have peace in marriage. Living beyond your budget. You want to have eyelashes. You want to have the best shoe. You don't need them. When you need it, it will come. Let me give you an instance. When we started our ministry, we started in somebody's house. From somebody's house, we move to somebody's place again. If anybody is telling that he's the one that started me, he's a, he's a dead man, God will kill him. Even the people that claim that they are with me, they have run away. Only me and the people that fear. It's only the trauma that is around now. But nobody will say he's the one that gave us anything to do the church here. God is the one that did. And God saw the way we're in zero limit. God took us here and brought us here. I'm trying to tell you the, the peace that God gives to us when we allow God to run our life. And see where we are today. Marriage is for peace, not for trouble. Do you know that there are some houses when they come to church, that's when they enjoy peace. But when they got home, fight is starting. That is not the essence of marriage. Marriage is for peace. Marriage is not a place of abuse or bitterness or quarrel. Is for peace. Sometimes, if I don't go, they call me. 
Hello, where are you? Aren't you coming home? I'll tell them I'm working. When I finish work, I will come. Because I know that if you want to make it in this generation where you have to work. Marriage is not for lazy man. It's for work. That's why the Bible says God placed man in the garden. He placed them in the garden to do what? To work. So marriage is for work. And, and when you work very well, peace will come to your marriage. And you can look at it in Psalm 37, verse 37. And Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Philippians 4, as I said, the Lord will give you peace by all means. By all means. Colossians 3, 15. And again, number 3. Marriage is to provide, is it provides a room for fruitfulness. Don't copy this one that doing baby mama, but my, but my daddy mama, sister mama. They don't have a future. They don't have a future. When I want to go, my, when, I, when we're about to go to Marbury, I told my wife, the role model we are copying is Kenneth Copeland. We are copying Bishop Oedipo. We are copying Bishop Aremu. Recently, Bishop Aremu says, please, how many years? Well, uh, uh, 35 years of marriage. I said, this is our model. Marriage is all about having a model. And in our lineage, nobody is barren. Kenneth Copeland was, Kenneth Copeland was not barren. Bishop Oedipo is not barren. I am not barren. So marriage is for room for it creates room for fruitfulness. When there is faithfulness between both of you. We had an issue now that we are trusting God for God to solve. A woman gave birth and the husband is saying, no, he's not sure it's his wife. It's his children. He's not a member of our church. Eh? But when they came for cancer and I told the man, but the child looked like, yeah, he has the same year like you. He has the same nose. He said, no, they have to do DNA. And when I call, I suppose, I suppose eh, DNA is about 200,000. The man said, he will not do that. He will go traditional way. I said, you can't go traditional. Go and do DNA to confirm that. But I said, this is your son. He said, it's not my son. Why? There is a leakage for unfaithfulness. unfaithfulness. The man said, he saw a test. That the one did not tell him that he has a relationship with somebody before. But right now, as he saw it, he has already, he thought in his mind that this is not his child. They should go for there. I said, it's okay. And the man, you know, the man doesn't want to spend money. So he's saying that they are going to go traditional way. That the traditional way is that they will take the child and put in the water. If the water carries the child away, it means that it's not his child. But if the child, if the water brings the child back, that is the child. I say, okay, me, I'm telling you as a prophet this. I say, no, sir. Sir, no worry, you don't understand. Waiting, I see for food, you know, sir. Marriage is for fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Let your husband know where you are. Let your wife know where you are. Don't claim you are in church, but you are, you are, you are, you are, you are in the beer parlor. When that thing begins to happen, you are controlling the trust that both of you have for yourselves. So marriage works on faithfulness. That's why Isaiah 23 verse 25 says, you serve the Lord. He will bless your bread and water. He will take away sickness from means of you and a number of your days you will fulfill. I prophesy this marriage that we are witnessing today we will not have any news or badness among them in Jesus' name. Are you, if you love them, say you love them, say amen. Number four, marriage provides favor. Favor. You enjoy favor. Somebody say amen. You just enjoy favor. Potential favor. Favor, sir. And there are some doors you have been opening before that you have been sweating. By the time you get married now, you are married now, you don't need to sweat. They just open. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, somebody? I remember, you remember the cancer that governor of What's the name of this governor? Uh, uh, this is my friend now. What's the name of this governor? Uh, Benue governor, yes. Otto. He was telling me, say, my friend, you are marrying now. You need favor. Favor will come. Just marry this woman. He was pointing to my wife. Say that get married. Money will come. I was thinking he was joking. He also told me, say, when he married his wife, that's when God opened political doors for him. From so, 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 to minister, from minister to. Uh, Honorable member from honorable member now to governor. There are some doors. Whether you fast or pray, that will never be open. Because the, the scripture cannot be broken. He said that finally the wife, finally the good thing. And obtain a favor from the Lord. So there are favors you enjoy when you marry properly. Not mumuli or foolishly or agely. When you marry right. There are some favor God just pushed to you. He just pushed to you. He pushed to you. 
And finally, marriage provides room for total submissions. Madam, if you are not ready to submit to your husband, you'll be uh, every day. You will know that men are so powerful. There must be room for submission. When you are submitting, then the man will love you. Men can love if a woman submits. I, 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 there is a man, he's a military man, he's a, he's a, he ranks a major. He went into Boko Haram, came back, and he called his wife when they came back, I want to eat rice and beans. When the man came back, the man saw Eba. And he was telling the wife, I want to eat rice and beans. The wife said, eat it, only eat it. Later I'll cook tomorrow. The man said, you have not seen me for almost six years. I came now, and you are giving me Eba. Do you know that that man is scattered that night? He's scattered. Pastor, they are senior pastor in their church. Spoke, everybody spoke. The man said he doesn't want again. Why? The woman does not have wisdom. You know, food is a soft, soft spot for a man. When a man eats food and you rub hand on his tummy and you are telling him, Only oh, no, you are welcome. I know you have worked very well. If you make him to feel like a king, he will treat you like a queen. So, submission is very proper in marriage. Don't mind this useless theory that is going all over the world. I, I, I thank God that Papa Debo has spoke about it. Bishop Debo has spoke about it. Feminist theory. There's, there's a woman now, they call her, what's her name? She has formed a, 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 a social media. If you see that, we have, two million people are there. Look at what she's saying. That women are to be the one to dominate the mouse. That is not, it's not men. Now women has the power to marry a man. If you, if you watch that video and what she's saying, the thing is trending now. Don't copy out. I guess I heard that she was a divorcee and she was abused. That's why she's doing that. Marriage is for submission. Total submission to God and to your husband. And can I tell you how marriage is? If your husband tells you don't go to church, if you go to that church because your pastor told you to come, you have to disobey your husband. Your husband is the driver of your house. He's the one that owns the house. I wanted to pray for somebody that is sick recently. As I lay my hands to her, I said, did you tell your husband? He said, no. He said, if, I t- if I've told him, he will not allow me to go to pastors to pray because my husband I have experience with pastors as I prayed they are not in the flow I told her I said call your husband mention my name to your husband and when he called the husband he told the husband that ah, so 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 man go so so man go the husband said okay no problem and I prayed God heal her without your husband permission no miracle can happen in your family without your husband permission no miracle can happen in your life also sir it takes both of you to tangle together to make things to work together that's why you have to stop living like a baby. You have to stop living like a baby. If you are allowing your mother and your father to be controlling your marriage, your marriage will have killed leg. Once you are married, no internal advice from anywhere. We face our marriage and it must work. Can I hear you loud and say, man? Can I hear you loud and say, man? Let me make you laugh. One of these days, recently, because how busy I am. So when I come to the house, ah, how are you, baby? God bless you. Have you eating? Shh, shh, eat. All of you guys, have you eating? I'm going to my room back. Go to read, walk, write, think. Maybe see missed calls. Start receiving missed calls back. No, I don't know that my wife has been looking for attention to talk to me for almost a few days. You know what she did? As I entered the room, bam. Let me go and wash my face with warm water. I came back. I tried to open the door. I don't see the door. Where is the key? He said, please, sit down. I want to talk to you. I said, what do you want to talk to me? I will talk to you later. I need to go for prayers now. He said, no, we need to talk. As I was just doing that, I just hear that voice. Sit down. Talk to your wife. And he told me, say, I notice whenever you come, you always put your suit anyhow. You put your shirt anyhow. Your shoe every hour. Now you're a married man. Just cut that test again. I read things very well. You want to be, you'll be angry. You see what you want to tell me that you locked the door? I will break this door. You're a foolish man. Very foolish. Because your wife is your prophetic eyes. He can see far. Recently, I had a business with some um, big boys. So we had a business. I had a company. So when we did the business, I took my wife there. They were around. In Transcom. So my wife, sorry, my wife said, don't do business with them. They will betray you. I said, no worry. God will have told me. I don't know. It's not everything God will tell you. God can speak to your wife. You know me? I'm very stubborn. Kai. I'm gentle, but I'm stubborn. I said, if you leave that thing to work, come on, get out. Leave your prophecy. Do you know that? The business did not work. Those guys betrayed me. They went back with the contact I gave them and pushed me away. I mean, I also used the grace of my life. I said, that business will not work. And the business did not work. 
So your wife can see if you train her to see. Your wife can tell you the future if you give her the future by the word of God. Jesus is Lord. Are you blessed somebody this afternoon? What are the requirements for successful marriage? Requirement for successful marriage. What are the things that you need for a marriage to be successful? Come with God. Don't be praying and your wife is watching movie. Ah, Baba, you are finished too. If you are praying, let her be also be praying. Like me, I pray, I pray in two hours. Minimum every day. My wife also pray one hour. Why did I give her one hour so she can go and do other things? Ah, they don't burn her way to open the door. She can't open the door now. As I wake up, lay abala gada bala deora, saladu kalabara, en konkon kota lazara, as I'm praying, she also pray. She does not, even though she feel prayer, she will have to do one hour prayer before she go and do it. Because that's what our spiritual father taught me. I was schooled by Bishop Balemu. I stay under his roof. He taught me many things, so I can't be a failure. That's why you are seeing this great result you are seeing. Under a few years, just three years, you have these results. Come with God. Come with God. Come with God. The reason many homes are leaked now, their, womb, their wife are busy watching African magic. How, how to divorce your husband? Part one. How to divorce your wife? Part two. Okay. How to talk against your husband? Slap me, I slap you. Part one and three. Then when the wife finish watching it, and women like experiments, begin to practice new. And put the marriage and scatter. Please, husband, give your wife some tasks. She now she's at home now with the babies, but she has tasks. There's a time she needs to start praying. Uh, he has a time. I give you so time you are praying. When I'm there, I'm not there, she's praying with them. That is how to grow your home. That is how to grow. I pray for you that God will give you grace in Jesus' name. Can I hear another say, man? When we got married, I had an offer to go to uh, sections, motors, I have a, uh, to go to Mauritius. But you know that I refuse. I told her, I say, okay. Say yes. I said, we are going to La Topica Champagne in, in Ikbeju, in Lagos. I said, we are going there. That's what we are going to spend our honeymoon. During honeymoon, that people say, husband and wife, they are enjoying it. We are praying. We pray. When I saw that she's frowning face, I take her out. She go and do boat ride. See the sea. Play around. Eat. She look at me and say, my husband, you are too much. This thing is too much. Too small, small. You, you have been growing in this thing. Me have not grown. Just you know, if you are not a man that has the fear of God, you will have gone angry and say, why will he talk like this? Women can complain when it's after their name. Come with God. That is the way to become what God wants to become. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. He said, one before me and be that perfect. And number two, have a good financial wisdom. Don't take things on credit. Mm. I like the one of me say, hmm, yeah. Somebody say, hmm. You think to somebody. Have financial Freedom. Don't take things on credit. Yeah, I got to that person who took loan five million. Already. Don't take things on credit. When I wanted to get married, my marriage was one month to marry. My wife called me. You know, women when they're happy and they're not happy, they cry. He said, My husband, do you know we are marrying next, next month? I said, I know. He said, But you have not bought anything now. I said, Don't worry. Oh, get this. She was angry. And I call her and say, Who kept you alive till now? Say, God. The person that kept you alive will bring the resources. As I spoke like that, somebody from US call her. But I give you a measurement of your wedding. This thing. Do this for her. Shoe. Somebody, when I'm paying for suit and my, my suit and everything, when I saw the amount, I was angry. I said, Why are you going to buy a suit of two million? And shoe. I wanted to collect that money. And buy that suit. You can see in bed we here. 50,000. I believe so in Naka. You don't do anything. Don't take things for credit. Don't take, don't anybody push it to them. Don't say because my husband is coming, let me buy things on credit. If you continue to take credit, you will continue to take credit forever. Live by your budget. That's what we call liquid, liquid spending. Transpicational spending. Have a budget. If you don't have money to buy it, don't buy it that moment. When you have money to buy, buy it. Are you hearing me, somebody? If you are hearing me, say amen. Are you hearing me? If you are hearing me, say amen. Don't go and make air on credit. Like my wife cannot go and do it. My wife, my wife does not do air. If she don't do those things, that what they call that, weave. Is it weave you got it? 
So I don't need to spend money on the answer. I spend money on uh, what you call shampoo. I receive my wife, she's naturally beautiful, presentable, and Holy Ghost filled. Don't take things on credit. Some people, why you see some people in church they are doing their hair like this when you are preaching, or their hair is teaching them that hair they are carrying some credit. Don't live on credit. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I saw one issue that happened in SPCA. I mean, one of you saw it. I was driving and I saw a man wanted to beat a woman up and a husband. What happened? He said, The woman has been coming to collect credit. How much? He said, 220,000. Uh, uh, I was dying one match at them. He said, Yeah, so you must collect money to him. So I said, ah, Okay, calm down. Oh, God, do you have money? He said, Does he have money? He said, Sir, the day they took me to bring my trouble to church, I wrote my wife's name to church. I told his wife, Sorry, his wife was not my wife in Jesus' name. That he wrote his wife to church. But you know, there is no peace. I said, okay, sir. Give me the account number. I paid the money. I'm not, and I sat them down and advised. You know that's where there. The wife phone was busy. 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 I told the man, I said, if I had to be you, collect your wife. No, don't let her use phone again. Because that's where she'll be. After now, she'll go into credit, collecting credit for phones. And before you know, the manager will damage. Control your home before your home control you. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. How many of you know that financial wisdom is good? How many of you know it's, it's good? How many of you believe it's good? They believe it's good. Say amen. How many of you believe financial wisdom is good? How many of you believe? How many of you believe financial wisdom is good? How many of you believe? Some of you don't believe. That's why I'm not living. How many of you believe? If you believe, it, say I believe. Say I believe. Say I believe. Somebody came to me and when we were talking, he said he's angry that the way Bishop preached last Sunday. In Canada, he pains him. Now, why would Bishop sit like that? That husband should not go and borrow things and buy for their wife. That work on your budget. That he was thinking your husband will, 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 will buy uh, some gold that he saw in his, his friend's neck. That he wants your husband to buy it for him. The Bishop came and just preached that Sunday and the husband changed his mind. I said, man, you're a wicked woman. He said, why would I say that? I said, you're a wicked woman. So your husband should go and buy gold for you and they will, they will send police to arrest him because of gold and you'll be happy. I said, man, I want to please. Sorry, I insulted you. He said, You don't insult me, sir. I said, Ma, gold does not matter when you are beautiful. Just try and find close up or charcoal and wash your teeth where. Well. Once your teeth is shiny, it's okay. Financial wisdom is very good. So very good. Like me, I don't copy. Me. You see some of my big friends, some of, some of these big, they will be complaining. You saw that one was complaining, that senator. He said, You know the core person, Apostle. You can, because I looked at, how would I call it? I learned that from Bishop Wedipo that the more money you spend on credit, uh, the charge card, the more you go poorer. Still on your budget. But some people, if you change their phone number now, they have almost 6,000 on the charge card. I know you are doing business, but with business without profit is a waste of time. I don't call people, it's people that call me. Once you come in, we talk. Finish. I wish you can. You have, how many of you have ever? Bishop Wedipo has ever called Bishop Wedipo. How many of you have asked Bishop Wedipo to call him? If he call now, hello. I was one day he called me. Eh? Hello. Yeah, how are, he's not saying how are you. He doesn't say how are you. Hello. Hey, uh, what is happening in Calabar? Hope that is. The yeah, election is going well. Finish. You'll be saying, why don't he greet me? He will tell you that before he greets you, credit has gone. And he does not talk too much. When Bishop calls like this, Bishop talks like this 40 seconds or 50 seconds. Or one hour finish. But you, Mrs. Milonia, Mr. Bilonia. Hello, have you eaten? Are you bathing? Are you, you don't need it. Save your costs before you enter debt. And finally, let's use this word, the word of God for our family. The word of God. Somebody say the word of God. All what we are saying since in the morning is the word of God. Let the word of God. Anytime something happens in my home, I sit my wife down. You see, okay, learn, learn from you. God, Apostle Paul said, be a partaker of the grace that I've enjoyed. I saw my spiritual father, that's what he does. I'll sit her down, come, read this place. We'll read it. Say, hmm. I say, see what you're talking about. It's not scriptural. Let us not do it. Operate your house with the word of God. Don't operate on social media. Some of those pastors you are seeing on social media, they are a list. They 
There's a situation that is happening. I don't that just happened recently. A man was on Facebook, so the women he said, send your husband boxer. We want to do special prayer on the Monday. And do my arrange your husband boxer and send. Later we hear now, when they brought the man here for me to pray, the man I started going shrinking, looking, looking like a skeleton. And when I pray, I said, Is anything the man the woman confessed and said yes? That the man said he wanted to do prayer, so the husband can be prosperous. Don't do that. Anything that does not look like the word of God, don't practice it. Let the word of God be the basis for your family. Anytime you are bankrupt of idea on your marriage, go to the world. John chapter 5, verse 39 he said, Search the scripture, yeah, you think. Yeah, you have everlasting and the one that testify of me. But the problem with many people, I don't want to study the word of God. I want to do marriage by myself and they fail. Don't fail in your marriage. Use the word of God as a basis for your marriage. If one of God does not say, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. The woman I was praying for, a woman, is it yesterday? You are here, that woman I was praying for. He instructed the pastor. Pastor was preaching in the church there in Winners. Whether in Winners, whether in Waterford, whether at Tibor, where. The man was preaching and he was his, the man, as she stood and wanted to go and call. The man said, don't go and make that call, it's wrong. And that I said, and the man did not talk. And the man said, if unless we could never pour you on his head, if we pass one, he said that he will go by it. Now, this is six years, no power, no poor. Now, when we try to call the man yesterday, we try everything all over. I have to start calling people that knows. Uh, then I got in touch. The man said he will not forgive that woman. That what that woman did to him in the church, he disgraced him. Little, little things that we are doing that he think can't. God does not count it. God take it serious. So I have to beg the pastor. That they begging pastor. I see pastor is an oracle. Please pray for her. Do this. He said no. That for him to forgive that woman. That woman needs to go back to that church in Atimbo where she and tell them that what he did to her is wrong. That that's why we are from. And there are some people that their calling does not forgive people. That's why we need to be very. If you have a problem in your life, go to the Genesis. Go and search very well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Use the word of God for your family. If the word of God does not say it, don't do it. If the word of God says don't copy it, don't arrange it. Live on the word of God. Husband, teach your wife to respect grace carriers. Also, also learn to honor grace carriers. So God can add many more years to your life. I trust God. As we do all these keys, our, our marriage shall be peaceful marriage in Jesus' name. Me, I'm not teaching what I practice for one year that I work for me. And I'm enjoying myself. I'm teaching what has worked for me. If you can practice all this thing I've taught you, sir, no devil anywhere. Don't mind tradition. Tradition fails. It is, it is marriage. That, it is the word of God that gives access to the foundation of fruitfulness that we are looking for. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Are you blessed, somebody? If you are blessed, say amen. amen. And also let me add this one to you, sir. It's just an advice. Don't let your wife have, don't allow your wife to have friends. That's what Bishop Maremu told me. And he touched that thing touches me. He said, My son, when I went to see him, he said, My son, you are married next week. You know that's how he talks. He said, Don't allow your friend to have wife, friends. Don't allow your wife to have friends if you want your marriage to be peaceful. And I said, So, but you mean you don't hear? If you have any friend, block them. I don't have friends in Calabar. Some of the friends I move it. I don't have, I don't I'm not friends with them again. I focus on God. God, come here. You will see me in some of you see me in church, just catching fire for God. And I'm learning, Lord, that when you come with God, those who have neglected, they will come back and look for you. By the time they hear the result that is manifesting in your life, please don't have friends. Friends can damage lives, and some friends can beat lives. Don't manage friends. Don't manage friends. Don't manage. I was asking my wife yesterday about somebody I know around the junction. He said, the man is late. He said, what happened? He said, the wife bought anointed water. He said, pastor, give anointed water. No, no, that it was saying, uh, oh, tap your back, there. Gave the husband. The husband now and went. Please don't have friends. Have, let the husband be your best friend. From friends, you meet Yahoo, they are Yahoo friends. They are, they are HK friends. They are Akas friends. They are fake friends. Let your husband be your friend. Anything that happens to you, tell your husband. Don't tell other party. Because those are your friends, I'm telling you that. You know what my husband is buying for me? My husband is buying. It's a lie. Buy nothing. Don't have friends. 
Because if we start having friends, they will start putting pressure. They will start putting the man on pressure. For some men will grow into IBP and die on the road. Don't have friends. And sir, please also, you don't have any friend also. Have your wife as your friend. Who is my best friend? My wife is my friend. If anything happened to me, I don't tell her. Sometimes she'll be telling me, oh, something happened in the office, don't tell me. I just, somebody told me. I say, who do you? say, people walking with you. I say, I don't worry. I know when I come to this, I will tell you. And if I don't tell you, it it's not a discussion. Don't have friends. Your friends can make you, and your friends can destroy you. Your friend can send you to jail, and your friends can be there. Where, where, finally, where somewhere, have been, is it Monday or Tuesday? Somewhere, they, wasted, they went to waste about five people. Security people went to kill them. The man said it was his friend that told him that you should just give him phone. That this job they want to do, that he will get like five million. And he was happy. And to make it compre- comprehensive, he was a pastor. And you know, security does not know anything. And they say, okay, they have signed the law. Gov- government have signed already that you should kill them. And they went, when they wasted them, they brought the picture and show the yoga. And look at me, I say, wow. I say, sir, don't you understand that there can be mistakes? There is no mistake in our job. You do anyhow, you see anyhow. Do have friends. Friends are wicked. Very wicked. Friends are wicked. A lady now is out of her marriage now. A lady which I'm talking to. Very high place in this country. But I mentioned her name. You know her. Very popular. Why? Her friend push her. They push her because she's divorced. She doesn't want her friend to be divorced. Now today, they're out of marriage. She's out of the marriage. Later she realized that that her friend that pushed her, pushed her because she was envious of, envious of his marriage. Don't have friends. Have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, as your friend. Well, you know you can't see them, but you can see your husband. Make your husband your friend. Stand on your feet, everybody, and let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God. How many of you are blessed right now? If you are blessed, shout your loud and say, Man. Shout your loud and say, Man. I know I'm not, I'm not eligible to talk, but Baba and Mama, I know you are here. Our elders are here. But I know by the time you go for the traditional marriage, you also speak to them. And I know God will bless you in Jesus' name. If you are here, your marriage has gone sour. Because you have opened your body to, to the devourer. Some ladies here, you are here. It's not only your husband you are, you are, that, that owns you. You have many boyfriends. 